learned that Israel has reportedly banned Switzerland from entering the Gaza Strip. That's because earlier this month, Swiss officials visited the coastal enclave to apparently have a pleasant sit-down with the heads of the Hamas terror group. Israel's defense minister has opened an investigation into the meeting, which Hamas actually tweeted pictures of showing the European delegation exchanging smiles with leaders from the terror group. Hamas says the meeting took place to discuss the ongoing Palestinian reconciliation efforts, but clearly Israel is more than a little disturbed to see European officials warming ties with terrorists that are devoted to Israel's annihilation. Switzerland has upheld controversial positions on Israel in the past, and just a few weeks ago, the Swiss government actually banned its officials from visiting Israel's Golan Heights, which they claim is illegal occupied territory. Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman is expected to keep this ban in effect until he meets with Swiss officials and gets to the bottom of this disturbing meeting. Back here with ILTV's morning briefing. Security forces have begun to evict the Nativ Chavot outpost and Israeli settlement in the West Bank that the High Court has ruled was partially built on private Palestinian land. This morning, hundreds of young people were at the outpost in order to prevent the demolition of a wood shop in the Itzion block, even starting fires at the entrances to the neighborhood to slow down the process. Border police officers could be seen dragging the youth out of the wood shop in order to clear the building. The shop is just one of 16 structures that have been slated for demolition by March of 2018. 15 other homes have also been ruled illegal. While none of the homes in the outpost sit entirely on private Palestinian land, nine of them have significant portions that do. And just last month, the High Court rejected a petition by residents who were seeking to spare the other six houses, which barely infringe on private land. Attorney General Avichai Mandelblit is reportedly working to provide building permits to these homes to avert their demolition. But it looks like the raising has already begun. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu is in Kenya right now for the inauguration of the next Kenyan president. The Israeli leader has been very busy forging unprecedented new relations with African countries and has just announced that Israel will open its first ever embassy in Rwanda. Ties between Israel and Rwanda have been flourishing over the last few years, and rumor has it that Israel is even considering opening direct commercial flights to the African nation. On top of this meeting with Rwanda's president, Netanyahu is also meeting with leaders from Gabon, Uganda, Tanzania, South Sudan, Botswana, Namibia, and Ethiopia. As if he weren't busy enough, the prime minister even addressed the African heads of government prior to the inauguration of Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta, rallying for unity to defeat Islamic Jihad terrorists all over the world, including Boko Haram. Security has been so tight surrounding this event that Netanyahu himself couldn't even attend the actual inauguration. Violent protests marred by police shootings have erupted in Kenya ever since President Kenyatta won the election last month, which many say was clearly rigged. But with Israel entering the picture, hopefully some stability is on the horizon. The IDF has arrested another 34 ultra-Orthodox demonstrators following violent protests in Jerusalem against the imprisonment of a dozen Haredi draft dodgers. A young man was hospitalized in moderate to serious condition last night after he fell from a roof while fleeing the military police. The IDF has also denied arresting a female ultra-Orthodox draft dodger after a rumor sparked even more violent protests at a Jerusalem IDF recruitment center on Tuesday. Over the past few months, ultra-Orthodox neighborhoods in Jerusalem and B'nai Barak have seen rising demonstrations against the IDF conscription of Haredi people. Police have used force to try to disperse the protesters using water cannons and foul-smelling skunk spray. And that's led to even more demonstrations. Earlier this year, the High Court of Justice struck down a law exempting ultra-Orthodox men from military service, saying it undermined the principle of equality before the law. We've just learned that Israel has reportedly banned Switzerland from entering into Gaza. That's because earlier this month, Swiss officials entered Gaza and apparently had a pleasant sit-down with the heads of the Hamas terror group. Israel's defense minister has opened an investigation into the meeting, which Hamas actually tweeted pictures of showing the European delegation exchanging smiles with leaders from the terror group. Hamas says the meeting took place to discuss the ongoing Palestinian reconciliation efforts, but clearly Israel is more than a little disturbed to see European officials warming ties with terrorists that are devoted to Israel's annihilation. 
Switzerland has upheld controversial positions on Israel in the past. And just a few weeks ago, the Swiss government actually banned its officials from visiting Israel's Golan Heights, which they claim is illegal occupied territory. Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman is expected to keep this ban in effect until he meets with Swiss officials and gets to the bottom of this disturbing meeting. A new Indian immigrant to Israel remains in a dangerous a coma after he was injured in a car ramming attack earlier this month. And now volunteers are helping raise money for his family. On November 17th, Evan Ezer Holaring was standing at the Gush Etzion Junction in the West Bank when he was run down by a car driven by a Palestinian man from Hebron. The teen driver had already run down a 70-year-old man nearby. Hollering had just made Aliyah the day before as part of a group of 162 B'nai Menashe Indians who claim to be descended from one of the 10 lost tribes. It's now been over a week of brain surgeries and 35-year-old Hollering still remains in a coma. Volunteers have now organized a fundraising campaign to help his wife and five children with basic groceries, winter clothes, and shuttling to and from the hospital. And local donors are even stepping in to help cover the cost of one of the children's bar mitzvah. That's all for now. I'm Natasha Kierchuk, and see you later with our main daily broadcast.